welcome back. Uh, today is going to be a bit more of a video about my personal journey. So if you are here for kind of info, advice, tips and stuff, maybe head back to my channel and click into another video. Uh, it's a yeah, bit of a personal one, a uh, little self-indulgent maybe, but actually this is a video I think is really important to make. I wanted to talk a little bit about my personal recovery journey and where I am with it at the moment. Um, now, the reason for this is because people who've been following my journey, so very briefly for the last two or three years, I've struggled hugely with um, anorexia, depression, anxiety, self-harm, um, some smatterings of suicidal intent. Um, and these are all symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder, which I am finally really getting on top of. And I am healthy weight. Uh, I'm managing the PTSD symptoms and I am beginning to kind of look forward and actually have a future, which is really exciting. Um, but what I found is that increasingly people have been really kind to me and praising me for being open and honest about my mental health journey or however you want to phrase it and I've just begun to feel increasingly a little bit uncomfortable that people think I'm being open and honest and actually I'm really only telling part of the story and what I don't want is for people to look at me and to think that if they are not managing as well as I appear to be managing, if they've gone through something similar, that they're not doing well enough. Because definitely I've been guilty of doing that. I've been really guilty of following other people's journeys or reading inspirational recovery stories and thinking, I'm not doing recovery well enough. Um, and that might sound like an odd thing to say. And if it sounds like an odd thing to you, then that's great. Uh, but for those of us with low self-esteem, who struggle with anxiety, who doubt our every thought, um, it's the kind of thought that comes quite naturally to us. So I guess, yeah, honestly, how am I? Things are pretty good. So my weight is stable. Um, it is healthy for the first time in my life and has been now for, for some months. But I find that really hard. I recently finally got up the courage to do something that my therapist has been gently encouraging me to do for many months, which was to try on every single item of clothing I own and to discard everything that was either below a certain size, so we had a cut off, I'm not allowed to have unhealthy sizes in my wardrobe, even if those clothes feel comfortable. So yeah, if they're below a certain size, they went. Um, or if I just didn't feel good in them. Uh, and I had to draw the line a little bit there because again, when you have a very, very, yeah, head full of self-doubt and self-loathing, uh, it's quite hard to feel good in stuff, but you know, you worked on the scale. Um, it was a really hard thing to do. Um, it made me recognize quite how much my body had changed. Um, so yeah, I'm still struggling a bit with that. Um, Climbing, which those of you who follow me on Twitter or Instagram or see me in real life will know is become a real passion of mine over the last few months. Climbing has helped. So I watch videos of myself climbing. I don't take videos just to share them obsessively on Instagram. Part of the reason I do it is a really important part of my recovery, which is that watching myself climb helps me to view my body a lot more objectively. And as I'm seeing myself get stronger and my technique get better um, and that kind of thing, I'm able to look at my body and go, yeah, that's a body that functions well and is strong and it makes me want to feed it and want to keep it well um, but it's it's not easy and I'm not sure that it ever will be um, I have blips I have bad days Friday was a bad day Friday was a day where following a dental abscess and a few days of being really sick and not being able to eat I had inadvertently completely inadvertently lost weight uh, and it made me suddenly you know the anorexic voice was there uh, and I could feel myself being sucked under. The good thing is that I have a great network of people around me. My husband really helped, my friend really helped. I went out climbing uh, with another friend, although I was too weak to really climb. Um, and I got through that day and I managed to get back on the wagon and eat and I'm putting the weight back on and it's all good. But it was hard. Um, so there are hard days. Other things, um, so I, have to make some pretty big compromises in order just to manage day to day at the moment. So one of the biggest ones is that I drive everywhere. 
Um, so I drive everywhere, including up into central London. I love driving in London. I know that's unusual. I love it. Um, but so I was presenting evidence to the select committee at the House of Commons yesterday and I drove there. Um, that doesn't make any sense at all. Most people would get on a train. Most people, however, would not have extreme anxiety around getting on the train and they wouldn't have intrusive thoughts about jumping under the train. Um, and so for me, avoiding trains is still a really important part of keeping myself safe in exactly the same way that I do not keep um, any medication that I might overdose on to hand. I do not keep anything that I have previously harmed myself with uh, to hand in the house. It's just another safeguard that I put in place just in case I have a moment when things become more difficult or an impulse overtakes me. Um, and, you know, those sorts of measures, they're not the sorts of things that people see. They don't notice every day. People might be aware that I drive and I like driving in London, but they maybe don't know the reasons why. The other things that I guess I do each day that people wouldn't be aware of are um, so again with food there's still a lot of stuff around food so I am managing to maintain a healthy weight I can now go out and enjoy meals out with friends but I can enjoy those meals out as long as they don't involve any one of a massive great long list of foods and yeah this is on my to-do list to tackle at some point and it is really inconvenient because most of those foods they're not I mean they're not terrifying because of calories it's just kind of phobia at this point um, so it's nothing to do with calories. I can eat chocolate quite happily, but you know, present me with potatoes. <laughs> I, yeah. So yeah. And the other big thing I guess that is a big compromise I make at the moment is that I think really carefully about what I do with my time. And I have to plan carefully about how to ensure that I'm in a good enough place to manage those things and that I give myself space and time afterwards. So an example here would be on Monday, we had a really fantastic meeting for the Children and Young People's Mental Health Coalition and another couple of coalitions that we're working with. And loads of our members came together and I was helping to facilitate the discussion amongst all these different members. So there's about 40 or 50 people in the room from a whole range of organisations. And I was basically trying to work out what our whole viewpoint where we agreed was so that I could present it to the select committee and that was a great day it was really fantastic that everybody came I really enjoyed being part of it felt I was able to do a good job but it has meant that you know today that evening I have to really take steps back and have a really quiet time just to recover because for me social interaction and kind of big social situations like that are just something I find really difficult. My anxiety is through the roof. I appear completely fine and calm and I appear quite extroverted um, and most of the time no one would ever know. But I guess that's what I think is really important to, to explain that, yeah, how I seem, especially how I look on stage, which is my happy place and, you know, you're over there and I'm over here and it's okay. Um, yeah, so I seem fine, but actually there's a lot going on there. So I guess... The long and the short of this basically is that um, it's not like, I feel like it's a plea for sympathy or something. It's nothing like that. It's actually just that I just want to be a bit honest and say, yeah, I've taken a massive steps forward in my recovery, still working really hard with my therapist on my PTSD. Um, I feel in control right now of that anorexia, but I think that is a battle I will fight every day. Uh, medication and lifestyle changes have really helped with depression and anxiety. Um, and yeah, we're getting to the root of the PTSD and I do feel like all these other symptoms will, will lessen over time. And I feel for the first time in my life able to really plan for the future and really begin to enjoy life and my family and have hobbies and all these things are fantastic but it's something that I'm really actively working on and so I guess as much as anything if you or someone you know is struggling with your mental health kind of just to give you permission to not be okay all the time recovery isn't a straight line it is for me certainly a battle and it's one where I'm hugely grateful for the massive support for people around me, uh, for the understanding of them and for the various kind of therapeutic medicinal input that I have in order to help me. But appearances can be deceptive. So look beyond the mask, I guess. And if we're talking about mental health, let's really talk about it. Let's really be honest and let's not be ashamed. Because a lot of what I've said in this video is the kind of thing that I would have hidden in the past. But take it or leave it, I guess.
that's me. Okay, <laughs> now I'm going to go away and think endlessly about whether to actually post this or not. So if you're actually watching it, then I've been brave and I've posted it. Um, please be kind. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> see you next time. If you want to see my other videos, then please subscribe. And generally, they're less personal than this. They're normally me with my professional hat on giving ideas and advice and tips. But every now and then you'll, you'll get one of these. So yeah, please subscribe and please like or leave a comment down below. Okay. Thank you.